it's me nim sony welcome back to another tutorial video today we are back in this project here that we had started a while back i know i've uh, had a few videos the way i haven't really touched upon the tutorial series you've been waiting quite a bit uh, but I sort of started a project that I want to kind of finish really quickly and it's quite a large project that battle royale game that I've been working on but uh, for now what we're going to do is actually clean up a few things that we should have really done in the first place uh, so what we've got here firstly we've got let's just press play and have a look at what we have so far we have a character that moves around we can move the camera left and right but we can't move it up and down and we have a character that doesn't jump now he does fall off things so he does have gravity but he doesn't jump so the two things that we really need to do right now one of which people have been asking quite a lot and i thought that you'd be able to figure it out but i think maybe i haven't explained it fully yet uh, and that is the camera movement we want to apply up and down um, motion to it as well we're going to start with that and then we're going to move over to jumping both of these are very very simple we've already pre-built the stuff that we need for these two things to work let's pop open our camera script very very quickly first so we have here transform player heading tilt cam distance player height now you'll notice we're using the player height because that's the little extra distance up from the ground that we're adding to the camera uh, where he spins around from we're using the camera distance the distance from the player that we're camera our camera goes to we're using the heading which is our left right turning of the actual camera and of course we're using the player but what we're not using is the tilt now the tilt itself is actually in there but we're not actually modifying the tilt at all by uh, by our mouse amount so what we need to do is we can exact we can use exactly the heading system already that we already have and do exactly the same thing to our tilt watch what we do firstly duplicate this line so we now have heading plus equals blah 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 but we're going to change that so that it's tilt plus equals and we're going to use mouse y not mouse x that's it we've literally done enough for our tilt to now function however there's a little bit of a problem with that let's just press save and switch over and have a look let it load let it load let it load and once it compiles we'll press play do, 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 do. right so now you can see i can move my mouse up and down and our camera will follow move it left and right and of course we can spin around now of course the thing with left and right motion is that once you go completely round you end up where you started which is fine you can't really do that with up and down because when you go too far you end up upside down and that's exactly what we don't want to happen so what we need to do is limit ourselves within the 90 degrees up and 90 degrees down amounts so let's unplay the game switch back over to our code and what we need to do here is simply limit the tilt var variable of course that's the one we're applying already we're already modifying it but before we apply it and modify it well just after we modify it before we apply it we need to add those limitations so let's drop it down add a line here so tilt equals and this is where we clamp it between the two values that we need mathf dot clamp and that is a function from our mathf library or floating a floating point numbers library uh, within unity or within c sharp in general um, we do have a C sharp one but I believe this one's from unity directly um, and what we do with that we give it the value that we're clamping comma our low amount which in this case I'm gonna say minus 80 degrees and then our high amount positive 80 degrees brilliant there we go we've just done it we've done enough now press save to limit the tilt see how in two lines we've take, taken what we already had and this is because we pre-built the system we've taken what we already had and we've already added what we needed switch back over to the game press play wait for it to compile and now we have rotation again same as before but if i go further boink, i can't go any more than that and the same with below you see i can't go any lower than that it just limits me entirely to those two 
angles. That's it. We've, we've done all of our camera motion already. Now, of course, we could have it detecting the ground so that we, we, don't, um, we don't go through the ground with our camera. Instead, it just zooms in. It'll do the same thing with walls. So, of course, we can go through walls. That's all advanced stuff. We don't need to do that straight away. We just need a, a character system that works and a camera that isn't completely, you know, too, too easy to break. Of course, going through walls, it's not a broken camera system. It's just a broken gameplay. But uh, that's something you can fix as you go along. For now, we've done the camera motion. What we need to do now is add a jump. Now, the idea here is, and I'll explain this once I've popped open the script here, so make sure you get your script open, the player script. Now this is quite a large script already, we could probably separate things about uh, quite a bit later on. But for now, what we need is a jump variable, which tells us the velocity that we need to hit when we press jump. Now all we do here, we already have a physics system behind this. We already have calculating camera, calculating the ground detection. We already have the do move function that moves us along the ground based on our velocity systems. All we need to do is set our velocity to what we want it to be when we press jump. So all we're going to do here, first let's create a new function. Uh, I'm going to do this at the end of the frame, so after all of the other guys have calculated their stuff. So that way we've done all the gravity calculations and then we apply the jump. So do jump here. Now we're going to do the same thing as we've done before. We just create a new function. I'm going to add it after the do gravity function. So do jump. In fact, I can just type it. I can just press paste. There we go, because I copied it. There we go. And in the do jump function, all we're going to do, first we're going to detect have we got ground. So if, oops, I've done an extra one there. If grounded, and of course that's in the wrong place as well. There we go. So if grounded, simple, very simple. Same thing as we did with the gravity here. So you can see if grounded and then we set our velocity. But in this case, we're also going to check the inputs. So if input dot get button down and in there we have a button specially made in our inputs, which is jump. Now the get button down function is very specific. It's not just the get button, so it doesn't just detect whether you're pressing a thing. It detects, in fact, whether you've pressed it in that one frame. So it only happens once when you press it. You have to let go and press it again for it to fire again. So that's a very useful function. And all we're going to do here, we already know we're on the ground. We already know we've pressed the jump button, so we can just set our velocity dot y very specific the dot y of our velocity so that's the vertical to whatever our speed is that, that we want for the jump let's say we jump at five brilliant so now we can just set that there we go switch over to the game we're already going to run the do jump function we've already added that to the update so let's play let's press play now press spacebar boing he jumps <laughs> and you can see if i tap it multiple times, he doesn't jump again while he's in air. But he's not jumping high enough to actually reach the, the ground up there. So let's give him an increase in the speed that he jumps at. I'm just going to double it. Now remember, the way physics works is not it nev never anything that is exactly linear. So when you double your velocity going upwards, you're not exactly doubling your jump height. Um, it's going to be a little bit different. The more velocity you put in, the higher the jump height's maximum becomes. So it's not just doubled, it, it's actually a lot more than double. So here, we're not going to just double the height, we're going to increase it more than that. But let's have a look at what 10 does for us. Boing! And you can see here we've more than doubled that height. Even though we've doubled the velocity that we jump at, we've more than doubled the height that we end up getting to. And that's literally it. We've literally done everything we needed in, what, three, four lines of code? We just needed to check the ground and then check our inputs and press jump and, and literally set our velocity based on whether we've hit the ground and press jump as well. And of course, the same with the camera. We simply added two lines. One, which was to, uh, you know, modify the tilt. And then two, which was to clamp it between 
80 degrees at the top and 80 degrees at the bottom. And that's it, we've literally done everything we needed. Now you can tell here, the other thing as well, is that our grounded um, boolean is not being checked for our movement system. So we're still able to move and do all of our calculations, all of our rotational movement while we're in air. This is something we could easily work on, we could just do a if grounded check and then we can have a separate system um, when we're not grounded. So we can have air movement where maybe the character doesn't rotate and uh, you know things like that where his, his sort of motion is slowed down, his acceleration is slowed down and you know it's, it's real easy to work with because we've already built the underlying system. This is why I wanted to build a velocity system instead of doing programming for every little bit you don't want to program jump motion what you want to do is program velocity and then simply apply the correct velocity when you press jump and that's all we needed to do and um, that's pretty much all of all for this video in fact what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna have maybe one more video where I describe uh, a little bit of simple animation maybe apply that to the character make sure that he applies that when we move and that's really it for this tutorial series. I wanted to just give you the absolute basics, but with an understanding of what you're actually doing. And that's why I was a little bit annoyed that when I saw a few sort of comments saying, uh, how do I do the camera motion vertically? I already built that for you. I already showed you how to build that, guys. You should be able to think, hey, we're already applying the tilt. All we have to do is modify it. And we're already applying you know, we're already modifying our heading the same way we want to modify our tilt. So we can just duplicate that and do exactly the same thing. Um, but anyways, hopefully I've explained it a little bit better in this video. Uh, try go through, go through the videos again if you still don't fully understand how this system works and how all the little movement mechanics work. And, 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 and try and understand everything that we've actually done rather than just doing it. This is why I didn't want to give out any code. Um, I don't like to give out code anyway, but uh, this is why I specifically didn't want to give out code even though I'm technically telling you all the code. I just want you to be able to understand what you're actually doing rather than just doing it. Uh, because just doing it, you're not learning anything and trust me, not learning anything is your guaranteed way to stay at the bottom of that ladder if you want to be a game developer. You want to be a game developer, you need to learn how to develop games. There's no point of learning or I can do it. None of that. You don't want to be able to do it. You want to understand how to be able to do it. Being able to do it is pointless because nowadays we've got systems that will automate the crap out of everything. You can literally build a game in clicks. That's the problem with Unity, but it's, it's something that makes it easy for people who do know how to develop and can use all of those extra features to speed things up. Anyways, hopefully you guys understand fully now. In the next video we'll probably do some animation and that's mainly the, the, the main bulk of this animation of this uh, tutorial series. I don't want to do too much more because this is a basics series. We don't need complexity in this. We'll probably start with this uh, project later on in the next series whatever, whatever I do. But for now I'm back to my uh, tiny beta system, uh, my new game, um, which does have actually a, it does actually have a name and um, I'll be showing that in the next video anyway. So that's the end of this video. Goodbye.